Welcome back, y'all. In this video, I'll be freebasing aniline sulfate, which is a misleadingly clandestine wording of a neutralization. Aniline sulfate is the sulfate salt of the organic base aniline, formed by the combination of aniline and sulfuric acid. Since there's a lot of reagent preparation behind the scenes that up until now I haven't thought would be interesting enough to put in a video, I thought I'd try it out. This is one of the more time-consuming preparations, relatively, so it seemed like the perfect opportunity. Converting aniline sulfate into aniline is done by treating it with a strong base, which I do by adding the sulfate to a stirred solution of sodium hydroxide. The amounts I'm using will theoretically give me 2 moles of aniline, assuming it's the sulfate, like the eBay listing for it said, and not the bisulfate. Based on the stoichiometry, I'm using a 25% molar excess of sodium hydroxide to make absolutely sure that no aniline sulfate remains unneutralized. The aniline, a liquid at room temperature, separates, forming a second layer on top of the water. It's slightly more dense than pure water, but the dissolved sodium sulfate and hydroxide makes the aqueous layer more dense, so it floats on top. I could separate the two layers and distill the aniline straight up, but I didn't realize how impure the starting aniline sulfate was until I saw how dark the free base form was. Instead, I decided to filter it to remove any insoluble impurities, then steam distill it. The aniline that came over is much prettier, being only slightly yellow, much closer to it being clear like pure aniline is. I use a separatory funnel as a receiving flask since that's what the distillate will end up in. Near the end of the first two distillations of the solution that has dissolved salts in it, the contents of the boiling flask bump violently due to superheating of the solution as the heat transfer from the precipitated sodium sulfate isn't even. After the first two steam distillations, I filter off the precipitated sodium sulfate and distill the filtrate to make sure that all the aniline was removed from it. Once the top layer of distillate becomes clear, I stop the distillation. If you watched my quinoline scrub synthesis video, this will be a familiar process. There's an additional note about that later in the video when it comes to the yield of aniline. I separate the layers and steam distill the aqueous layer, as aniline's solubility in water is appreciable, at about 3.5 grams per 100 milliliters. Near what would have been the end of this process, I was worried about how little aniline I was getting compared to what I calculated I should get. I checked the pH of what remained in the boiling flask from the very first steam distillation, and it was 3. I really should have done this from the start, but I didn't, and what this indicated to me was that my alleged aniline sulfate was the bisulfate, so I did some maths. I figured out I was about 20 grams of sodium hydroxide short of actual neutralization, so I dumped more into it until it was basic 2 pH paper and steam distilled even more. I also decided to isolate as much sodium sulfate as possible so I could compare the recovered aniline to the recovered sodium sulfate and see how much aniline I lost to oxidation, mechanical loss, etc. I dried the combined steam distilled aniline with potassium hydroxide flakes and decanted as much aniline as I could from the concentrated potassium hydroxide layer. I tried transferring the rest to a small separatory funnel, but it, it just wouldn't separate well enough to get any more aniline with, without also getting some of the aqueous layer. I distilled the decanted aniline from zinc dust and ended up with 109 grams of super pretty aniline, boiling from 174 to 176 degrees, plus roughly 10 grams left in the aqueous layer. I dehydrated the sodium sulfate by heating it, and it ended up being 215.9 grams. This is slightly more than the theoretical amount, and I mean, you can see all the black shit interspersed with the white, what should be the white salt. So there's clearly some oxidized aniline-derived products and probably some absorbed water skewing that number. Here's all the maths. Based on this, my low yield of quinoline in that video makes a lot of sense now. And that's about all I've got. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and or subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.